Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5, Episode 10, Thoughts. This episode is called Past Life, another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MCU was leading up to and including this episode, but not for thinking it came out after this episode first premiered. The episode is rated TV-14, so will this video be? Let's dive right in. So yeah, Cassius discovers the body of Sinara, and for the rest of the episode we see how devastated he is to lose her. And they did a good job setting up because... I want to say it was the episode right before this one, he almost, or, yeah, he believed he was going to, he might lose her to Falnak, and, yeah, the show can only go so long without referencing the original trilogy of Star Wars, you know, Scan says no life forms, and we see there was indeed one, and it's a powerful ally of the good guys. Nicely done. And let's see. Yeah, uh, Deke embodying a certain chunk of the audience asks, How is this supposed to work again? And let's see. Yeah, uh, the doctor tells Cassius, there's nothing I can do to bring back Sonara, and he ends up dead because of it. So again, we have this, that's not only fascists, that's dictators in general. There's many a dictator who murdered people who did exactly what they were told, and then eventually they reach the point where it's like, I literally can't do it. You're asking me to do something that is literally impossible and they end up dead because of it you know it, this was something the Hitler did Stalin did several of the uh, North Korean dictators you know Kim Jong-un and uh, I can't believe I'm blanking on the the name of um, yeah Let's see. And and Cassius, I didn't think that the relationship between Cassius and Sonara could get creepier. But with her dead and him still talking to her like she's still alive, got creepier. And it yeah, like on the one hand, you can kind of understand because yeah, when she was alive, a lot of the time she didn't speak. He basically, you know, he would yeah. He would, he would have the entire conversation on his own. But on the other hand, that was because she could communicate a lot without speaking. And the third hand, that's too many hands. And let's see. The, um, yeah. Cassius uh, uh, forces Ty to drink the, the, what was it called? Odium? which sets up nicely what it's going to do to Cassius later on. <laughs> I like Flint saying, you know, because cause Mac is like, oh, I can't wait to drive my bike. And and Flint is like, isn't that what little kids ride? And yeah, they, they're able to to free some people with some great action scenes as part of that and yeah it is kind of sweet Tess and, and Deke you know Deke not quite knowing what to say and wanting to, to you know you look great for a dead person I mean I mean I'm not saying you look bad I'm just saying considering you're dead <laughs> and Tess is like I'm gonna I'm gonna take the shovel away from you now you don't have to keep digging I'm happy to see you too you know, I, I know some some misogynists are like, why do you know why do women let us you know say such terrible things instead of just interrupting us and not you know? Okay, first of all, I'm pretty sure it's hilarious for them, and second of all, nobody's putting a gun to our head and making us say ridiculous things. And I yes, I do include myself in that. I know for a fact that I've said some really just, you know, things that later I think back on, like, what was, 
what was I on? And yeah, very chilling when Elena comes face to face with herself. Very nicely done. And yeah, you know, it is this thing of the the yeah, you know, she's she's headed into the room and we see a little movement. There's clearly a person there, and she asks, What's your name? And Elena sits up and says, Elena. And, you know, they have a, an ongoing conversation. And, and yeah, like this thing of Elena, uh, I, how do I distinguish? Let's go with imprisoned Elena. Imprelanist. Imprelanist is like, I remember being on the other side of this, you know, from before the time travel, because we're still in this, you know, time travel paradox. And, yeah, you know, Elena is trying to wrap her head around it and and you know, yeah, we hear about how Imprelanist has, you know, been you know, the reason she hasn't aged much is they keep killing her and bringing her back, torturing information out of her, and that's how she's Cassius's version of a seer. She's gone through all this once before. And yeah, when I, lo I love when Elena you know, says, are you trying to tell me how to stop this from happening, or are you telling me there's no hope? And, yeah, and, and you know, Imprezlanist says, you know, I remember when Mac was alive, you know, which is not a wonderful way to, to that's not something anybody wants to hear. And, yeah, Deke volunteers, and he doesn't volunteer Kappa, he volunteers himself, and, you know, yeah, you can appreciate, yeah, you know, at the end of the, maybe he doesn't fully believe this, but, like, his parents died hoping for this, he's not going to not help, and, and let one of the time travelers not be ready for time travel, and... Yeah, we have the, um, you know, I forget exactly who said it, but someone said we have a plan for that. Was is that a reference to uh, Elizabeth Warren or anyway? Um, yeah, very cool. With you know, I love that. We don't see exactly what Fitz is doing. We just see him, you know, he's, he's fiddling with something. He walks across the room, fiddles with something. And then, yeah, we see he set up a wire. And, uh, yeah. I'm a bit of a mark for a good, uh, you know... Uh, yeah, a, a, scene, a good scene of you know, characters standing for, for a second or, or more, and then we see the, the stuff that was sliced off slowly actually fall. And let's see. Yeah, and one of the Elena says to the other, this is like an echo. You're thinking of a different badass person of color, you know, awesome female character in the MCU. Yeah, Daisy insists she will not go on the time travel because she, you know, Deke has gotten to her. And it's it's very funny, you know, Deke is like, would you do it? stop? And and she's like, I'm trying to offer my, you know, I'm saying I'll be back up, you know, but yeah, ultimately, you know, Coulson was the thing, you know, May taught you to fight, but I need you to lead. And he ices her, and, you know, I think it's May who says, she'll never forgive you for this, you know. And, and yeah, I really appreciate, you know, Daisy is being logical about it. You know, this is not the, oh, irrational woman, misogynist stereotype, which is not based particularly upon reality. Men are also, you know, us men are also completely capable of making terrible decisions. You know, probably more so. You know, she, yeah, she says, yes, I don't have my powers right now, but we'll find a way to bring them back. And, 
you know, once they're back, we, you know, we saw the video, I was there, you know, let's see, and, and yeah, um, Imprelanist insists, you know, we're gonna have to let Phil die, which is obviously gonna be extremely difficult, and, and very dramatic. I don't know how I feel about the the big twist of, you know, oh, Emperor Linnist doesn't, you know, her arms have been cut off. Like, d uh, I've, I've heard, you know, activists for, you know, the, the disabled, you know, say it should not be treated as like a, a twist or a punishment in a piece of fiction that someone becomes disabled and um, what did I write yeah and and uh, Flint builds the stone very cool with the the space uh, you know journey and yeah, so the audience knows once, you know, we see an Elena, we realize pretty quickly it's Imprelanist because, you know, no arms, which again, you know, they could have done that some other way. There are other visual signifiers. Uh, you know, he, he thinks that they, they cut off his Elena's arms. And yeah, she, her she gets her her throat cut. So now they both dead. Ugh, never mind. Um, yeah, the they put in the teaser in the TV spot for this episode, Elena being threatened by Cassius. Obviously, that gets the audience like really emotional. It's like, oh, are, you know, is she going to die? And then it turns out to be, you know, the other, yeah, not a big fan of when, you know, regardless of medium. I know it happens in comics, so it's, it's, as an adaptation, there is a certain, yeah, it makes sense for that. Let's see, and, um. The, yes, then we get to, yeah, Cassius fighting Mac was quite cool, and yeah, if Cassius was not on Odium, it wouldn't even be close. And, and yeah, just so intensely satisfying to see Mac be able to take out Cassius. I did actually think that there would be more episodes of the, the open conflict between Cassius and our agents, and that it would be longer before the time travel, but I figure you know we're we're halfway through the season just about. I figure the second half of the season is the agents in the present trying desperately to figure out how to prevent this terrible future. And yeah, honestly, um, the the let's see. Crap, what was... Yeah, I, I wrote down, reminds me of the opening to Blade. I forget if that was the fight between Cassius and Mac, or if it was right after that. I think it was their fight. And, yeah, also just so satisfying when Cassius is the one who has his hearing taken away. Uh, you know, the... Like, it, it would bug me if it was, like, long-term, again, not, you know, it's just, it's kind of uncomfortable when disability is treated as, like, a punishment for some, yeah, but, you know, he dies very shortly after, and, yeah, it's just, it's poetic justice, and, yeah, you know, Enoch has to spend the next several seconds as a battery. Love this episode. Really, really excited for the next one, which I will cover 
tomorrow. And yeah, MDB trivia. Daisy says, if I go through that portal, you know it's the beginning of the end. Ser season, the series season one finale was titled Beginning of the End. And let's see. Huh. So in the goof section, one person, uh, yeah, it was submitted. When Elena is talking to her revived self, they should be speaking in her native Spanish. I think an argument could be made. Yeah, it was probably they didn't want the audience to, to deal with subtitles. And let's see, that might be... Yeah, uh, a bunch of the best lines from the episode or in the memorable quotes section. Yeah, I like, you know, Fitz is, is referring to, to Gemma the, as the fiancé, which, like, yeah, he's, he's really, really happy that they are engaged now. Let's see. Guns, man, it's like cheating. They shouldn't give these to anyone that's not a really, really good person. You'd think there'd be a law. Where has this been all my life, right? Level 3, hidden in a wall cavity. Yeah, now you tell me. In Enoch's defense, they couldn't exactly have told you any sooner. Let's see. It was almost nice knowing you, and you're a pain in my ass. And... Yeah, um, Elena, right, in the, yeah, in the quote section, she's referred to as future Elena, that does make a lot of sense, and yeah, she says, you know, the team makes one choice and it ruins everything to save him, Phil Coulson is dying and you have to let him, and let's see. You sure they found you? The evidence is highly suggestive. And is it just me, or did they not at all misgender Enoch? Like I feel. Oh, never mind. Yeah, let's see. Um, right, Colson says we never should have left him alone. Uh, let's see. But yeah, like, other than that, you know, characters refer to them as automaton and weird robot. But I don't think very many characters, at least of the good guys, refer to them as, as he or him. And let's see. I think that might be... About yeah, um, that is everything that yeah. So until tomorrow, it's a motorcycle. Imagine a, a rocket with two wheels with a place to hold on. You dig it.